So who will lead the way? Who will put the fear into perspective and to restore, as FDR did in that speech, the American optimism that has always characterized this nation? That is the question that will be front and center, one of the very big questions as this election heats up. We've now got 16 weeks to go to decide who will be president for the next four years. Here's just a sample, and we're going to play more of this in a moment, of Joe Biden today. But I have to start by speaking about what millions of Americans know when they wake up every morning with worry, anxiety, and fear. We're still a country in crisis. Here now, Simone Sanders, Biden 2020 campaign senior advisor. Simone, great to have you with us tonight. Thank you very much for being here. So, you know, this question of how nervous everybody is. And when you look at those numbers about parents being so concerned to send their kids back to school, um, is, should fear keep them from doing that? Does Vice President, former Vice President Biden believe that these kids need to get back into the classroom this fall for a myriad of reasons? Well, thank you for having me tonight. Look, I think this is similar to the conversation um, that folks were having uh, a couple months ago about reopening. And just as a couple months ago, where Vice President Biden noted it was a false choice on whether uh, do we want to get people back to work or do we want to keep folks safe from the coronavirus? That's a false choice. This is similarly a false choice. It's not about um, folks who want to reopen schools versus people who do not. This is about what's safe. Everyone, including Vice President Biden, wants to ensure that our children are back in school, but it has to be done safely. And as President Trump is saying, in terms, as President Trump is saying, uh, all throughout the, this, this last week and a half, folks from the administration as well, that we just have to get folks back to work, mm -hmm. creating a mandate is not a plan. You know, the coronavirus, COVID-19, is still very much so with us. And so that means you need testing, you need contact tracing, you need to be working with yeah. and issuing guidance um, to governors and folks across this country. And Vice President Biden, but again, believes they, that we need a I, yeah. plan to do that. He's okay. put forth um, you know, but I, I mean, when you, when you look at the fact, so you know, you look Trump at these other out. countries that, ha that have done it safely. I mean, at, so, at what point? So everyone stays home in their house until there's a vaccine? I mean, you know, at some point we need to say, and, and think about what's happening with so many kids across America right now anyway. Their, their lives being put in danger by other things, by other factors. Their parents have to go back to work. Some of them are in abusive homes. It's been, you know, documented in ways that are truly scary. You look at the numbers of, of, of children and what they die from, the flu suicide, homicide, which we've covered here a lot over the past few weeks. Um, you know, do you ever look at all of this and say, this is shocking that we have put ourselves into this position of being so hunkered down in this environment when we do know some of the things that help to keep us safe when we go out? Well, Martha, to be clear, we're in this position because the Trump administration failed to act. As early as January and February, the Trump administration and the president specifically knew that COVID-19 was a threat, and they did nothing. We're still trying to figure out what the president exactly was doing in January and February. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have record numbers of unemployment in but this I'm country, about where we are the right fact now. that we are still, uh, and whether or not we are still currently in what is this July, we don't know the state of things, and we don't have real plans to send our from the federal government to send kids back to school the fact that you know government uh, local well, government the federal government the has, has has put out 13.2 no hold on and now the federal government has put out 13.2 billion a plan Can I from the Trump point? administration Martha 13.2 billion dollars have gone to schools across America from the federal government only 195 million has been spent and what we're hearing is that they want more money that the teachers need more money in order to reopen the schools and, and you know what I think people get that they see what's at work there now I want to ask you something about about the agenda here overall in, in terms of charter schools because one of the things that's been suggested is that if a school does not want to reopen an individual taxpayer should be able to use the money that is allocated for their child to make the choice to send them to either a charter school that is opening or a religious school in their area why shouldn't a parent be able to do that or do you believe that they should Martha I am not sure uh, what plan you are referencing, but I can tell you that we have yet to see a plan from this administration on how to safely reopen schools. We have yet to see the president partnering with governors and uh, talking to folks like teachers, um, putting a plan together with them. Look, Betsy DeVos was did the did the morning shows. I at least saw one this past weekend, and she didn't yeah, have any answer to her on what the plan was. That is not right, a so plan. So you're just like, saying you know, there's a mandate the, you, is you not know, a plan. Okay. So what I am 
am saying, Martha, let me be clear, is that Vice President Biden has been extremely clear. You know, Dr. Biden, his wife, is a teacher, okay? So yeah. <laughs> she is someone who has, has been in the classroom, and he believes that this is a false choice. It's not do we keep kids at home and beat the virus or do we send them back to school. The question is, how can we go forward safely with a plan that protects not just the students but the teachers, the custodial staff, the folks who serve the lunch? This well, is about the, the studies so far uh, show that the, the children are not system. transmitting this virus um, in big numbers in the places that Martha, have reopened. Which is why I'm looking I at said, the science. Martha, I'm looking at the numbers. I'm looking at the data that we've seen Martha, from Europe. Which is why I said this is not just about the students. This is about the teachers. This is about custodial staff. But it's staff. mostly this about, is about the, the entire economy. <laughs> it's mostly that about the learning the loss that they've had over the last uh, several months, and that, that that could be absolutely devastating to these students if they don't get back to school. I want to play one thing um, from President Trump because he okay. he he definitely used the opportunity in the Rose Garden to uh, to really dig into the campaign issues here, um, and I want to give you a chance to respond to this. This is President Trump earlier. Watch this. Today. Uh, Joe Biden gave a speech in which he said that the core of his economic agenda is a hard left crusade against American energy. He wants to kill American energy. He wants to impose the Green New Deal on our country. When I first saw the Green New Deal, I thought it was a joke. What's your response to that, Simone, on behalf of the former vice president? Yeah, my response to that is Donald Trump isn't telling the truth. It pains me to say that he lied from the Rose Garden today. I, I, I wish uh, he turns, turns the tape and watches Vice President Biden's address today. He talked about uh, the second flank of his Build Back Better plan, a plan to create good union-paying jobs for working families across this country and bring everyone along. And today, our plan focused on a clean energy economy and infrastructure. You know, the White House often talks about uh, Infrastructure Week for four uh, for, for Infrastructure Week. You know, we have yet to see an infrastructure plan, but today Vice President Biden unveiled one that had support from unions and folks in the climate uh, community because it's a, it's a plan that works. Well, you know what, it is you a know plan what the president that creates jobs. That. He it says is a he, plan he had eight years in the White House a plan and 48 years in, on Capitol in the Hill economy. to fix the bridges and do infrastructure, and he, he, in 48 years he never did it. I'll, I'll let you respond to that before I let you go. Well, within the first month of the uh, Obama-Biden administration, they got to work on the Recovery Act that gave money across the country uh, to things like rebuilding America's crumbling infrastructure, but also getting folks back to work. Ask the people in Michigan. They know about the work that Joe Biden did. The Trump administration, though, to my, to my knowledge, has had 41 months. They have yet to do anything. So we will put Vice President Biden's experience and his track record up against Donald Trump's any day of the week. All right. Last one to talk to you about. I hope you'll come back soon. Simone Sanders, thank you very much. Good to have you here tonight.